good morning ladies and gentlemen uh, so sorry for this delayed start uh, as you all are aware today we are we have with us mr mrs rani sushmita ma'am who is appsc first ranker in the recently held uh, 2019 batch and she got she was under training in visakhapatnam currently and she is with her and no other like ranker can be in a position to tell you her insights with respect to answer writing because the trend has been completely changed the questions that were being asked with respect to state psc examinations has also taken a different turn so she is in a perfect position to guide you with respect to answer writing like lot of you students have cleared tspsc mains as well as appsc mains and you might be thinking about how to approach this answer writing how to improve your presentation how to effectively score well in this mains examination so no other person can suggest you or guide you in a perfect way to enrich your content in the answer writing so i'd like to invite rani sushmita ma'am onto the dais please give her a big round of applause as today we have this answer writing session uh, most of our students from kpis has cleared this preliminary stage and numerous students have entered into this mains orientation like mains so this stage is very crucial only if we could succeed in the final list you have to work very hard with respect to this mains preparation the 3 or 4 months time span which you are having is very important in that direction we have been bringing a lot of toppers while guide chestaru atlane test series kaani content vision lo gaani even for with regard to mentorship as well kp sir and his team will definitely help you in whatever guidance that you need with respect to this mains examination as well so kindly utilize these opportunities and whatever doubts you have please clarify all your doubts with respect to mains by asking ma'am and make this session a very uh, interesting one first of all congratulations you made it to mains so so i'm very happy and delighted and i just want to know how many of you attended my prelims uh, um, talk oh few of the hands i can see great so congratulations to you too uh, yeah coming to mains now mains is one of the toughest challenge um and uh, unfortunately fortunately and unfortunately you have both pros and cons so you are one among another 50 students who will be competing with you because almost both telangana psc and andhra psc is in the ratio of 1 is to 50 1 is to 57 i think so so you will be one among them and that is very fortunate at least you are one among them but very unfortunate thing is you need to overcome those 50 49 people odd right to gain that or to get that seat so that is one of the toughest challenge and um, you know and we'll see uh, we'll work it out uh, many things so before going into that i just want to know any marvel and dc fans over here marvel and dc fans very few very few <laughs> okay great 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 i can see few hands but uh, have you heard of spider man superman batman right right everyone heard of them right yeah so they are the comic characters uh, since 1940 onwards and uh, dc and marvel are two publishers they used to publish on various superheroes so there will be some loyal people for marvel comics there will be some loyal people for dc comics and i am a very um, ardent comics reader so and i am big fan of batman okay why batman there are so many superheroes uh spider man is there superman is there and thor is there uh, avengers are there why only batman yes no superpowers great great uh clap for him no <laughs> you know he doesn't have superpowers but still he is a superhero right many of many of the people don't know like for spider man definitely there is a superpower like he can spin webs or he can climb walls but for batman so he uses so much of technology there will be one utility belt surrounding him and he uses technology 
he'll make things work for him he doesn't have any super power but he'll make the universe work for him based on science and technology so today uh, why i came up with that intro because uh, i want you to utilize technology or realize your super power for that sake i want to introduce this thing so all of you got your mobile phones take them out take them out so today we are going to do one simple exercise which will tell you that you are batmans that will tell you that will prove your super power within 5 or 10 minutes and uh, today i have one challenge so we'll calculate your reading speed today here itself everyone do the exercise please take your mobile phone or if you have any printed materials like newspaper or uh, textbook please take that out as well if you don't have take out your mobile phone yeah so we'll do one simple exercise which will increase your reading speed here right now you know you don't even realize that you have that potential that i can read so fastly uh, here right now you are going to increase your reading speed okay i'm not going to do any mantra or any magic but i'll tell you one simple exercise which will increase your reading speed and why do we want to increase our reading speeds because we have huge syllabus ahead we need to okay okay am i audible now now fine great last benches great so yeah so yeah so we are going to calculate our reading speeds first of all and then we'll do one small exercise and then immediately we'll calculate our reading speed once again okay so take out any reading material you are having if it is in phone take out and open your stopwatch uh, open your stop clock or something in the phone itself in two tabs okay all of you ready all of you ready okay you should be having one reading material with you anything and a phone just to calculate your speed yeah so on my i'll say start then you need to start not now okay so you just keep reading whatever material you open if you don't have any material open wikipedia open what is marvel or dc uh, that page will be there open that or uh, open whatever wikipedia you want open hyderabad or sikandarabad wikipedia open that and you start reading okay so when i say stop okay when i say stop you will be stopping your reading and you are going to calculate number of words you have finished within that time okay so that is first exercise okay understood everyone understood or still yet to understand raise hands those who didn't get it okay all of you got it i'll say start and you should be starting reading in your mobile phones and i'll say stop then you should be stopping your reading i'll calculate time for you that's why so within 1 minute let us say how many of you so no need of your stop clocks now just uh, because i'll be opening mine and we'll be calculating your reading speed now yeah so on my saying of start you are going to start the reading no need to understand it fully though you just read because uh, uh, i want to see your uh, reading ability not understanding ability okay yeah so start
stop stop please mark where uh, from starting point and finishing point please mark those points and calculate number of words in it even a is a word two is a word e is a word calculate every word which you have read and uh, you know note down how many words you have read this is almost one minute one minute 68 microseconds one minute we can say so within one minute so calculate number of words you have finished within one minute from starting point to ending point Okay, note that down somewhere. Note that down somewhere. Everyone ready with your number of words? Those who are not ready yet, raise your hands. Okay, please calculate. So, that is your reading speed per minute. And... I can promise you and I can vouch that I might increase more than half of your reading speed here itself with one simple exercise. So, you will be realizing your superpower of reading. One simple exercise which you are going to do. Done. Everyone calculated your words? Okay. So, note that down somewhere. Now, the second exercise we are going to do. This is the exercise which you ought to do every day, henceforth, is please reverse the reading material. Please reverse the reading material and please read from starting to end point by reversing the reading material. You know, don't calculate any time now. Please reverse the reading material and please try to read from starting point to ending point. Please reverse. Yeah, ulta, ulta kar do pura. You know, reverse the reading material. Make the book upside down. You know, and read it. And read it. Make the book upside down. Make the material upside down. And read it. Totally. So, you are, uh, the book should be facing your opposite side and you will be reading. It is very tough to read that way. But please try to finish off. Try to finish off from starting to ending by reversing the book. From your starting point to your ending points. Finish off every word. Don't, don't uh, ignore words. Finish off every word. The same starting and ending point of your material which you have marked. Finish off every word. Finish off every word from starting point to ending point by reversing your reading material. Done? Everyone done? Done? Those who are not done, raise your hands. Okay. Finish off. Finish off. I will tell the significance of this exercise. Please don't neglect it. 
please do it it's just matter of just three or four minutes we waited like not me but you waited almost uh, more than half an hour for this session right so three more minutes please do it Done, everyone done? Yeah. So, this is exercise number 2, which is reversing and reading. Now, for third exercise, third exercise, we are going to do third exercise. Again, keep your book normal. Don't reverse it. Keep your book normal as you have done in your first reading. Keep your book normal. Now, see, last time stopwatch, I want to show it to you. So, it is just 1 minute 68 microseconds. Have you seen, right? So, first bench has seen at least. Okay, I am not uh, doing any magic. So, so, from starting point, which you have started your reading material. Now, keep on reading and I will tell you to stop. So, you might cross your ending point, which you have finished last time in one minute. Please read till I say stop. Understood? Understood? You might cross the ending point which you have read previously for one minute. That is your reading speed. Remember last time? So, if you have read more words means what happened? Your reading speed increased, right? Yeah. So, again I am, just a second. I am uh, lapping it up. So, when I say start, immediately start reading material normally and... When I say stop, mark that point and uh, we need to know how many increase their reading speed and with how many words. I want to see, I want to raise your hands. Yeah, so please be ready. Start. Stop. Stop. So, stop from just to the point which I have finished. Okay. How many ink think that they have crossed their reading speed? Raise your hands. Just see how many of you crossed yourself. Just see how many of your friends raised their reading speed. Right? Almost three-fourth, more than three-fourth of the class, right? Please raise your hands again. Almost everyone, right? Almost everyone. Those who have didn't uh, done it, they wouldn't have done the exercise properly. So, and I can show you the time limit as well. One, one minute, 82 microseconds. 68 microseconds was last time. 82 microseconds, yeah. How you are able to do it? Now, uh, you believe our, you all are Batmans, right? Do you believe you all are Batmans? Yes. You have that innate super ability to read pretty fast. So, one simple exercise to increase your reading ability is daily read whatever you are reading ulta for 5 to 10 minutes which will improve or double, triple your reading speeds. Why I am telling this? Because we have mains examination which is pretty nearby. Okay. I want to show this exercise to you because last time when I quoted in one of my interviews that I read very fastly, then people were questioning. Now, how can you read that much fast? Like, are you human or are you robot? So, all you all are robots? No, right? But every one of you almost increase your reading abilities, right? So, you read more words. 
within one minute time frame compared to your older versions by doing one simple exercise to increase your reading speed. Everyone enjoyed the exercise? Do you think is it useful? It is damn useful. Okay, trust me. And please do that exercise every day for 10 minutes. 10 minutes take pick up whatever you want. Read ulta. So that will what that will do? That will increase your eye span. Okay. So everyone will have their eye span. You know, with that they'll some someone will have a span of two words. Just they can read two two words. Someone will have a span of reading three three words. Okay. Someone will have the ability to read four four words. Now, if you are reading ulta, you need to observe each and everything which will actually increase your eye span. Okay. So, when you are reading it normally, so your span of reading words per every microsecond have increased. When you are uh, third time when you did the reading. So, that increased your ability of reading. Understood? So, within that time only, you are able to read more. Agree or not? You have only raised hands. Okay. So, I haven't done any magic. It is you who did the magic. So, that is one innate superpower we all have. We can increase our reading speeds. Okay. Please do the exercise for 10 minutes. So, we covered reading speeds. Now, coming to your planning. Okay. We all have around 75 days almost approximately. Right. So, you have one more exercise now which you are, which you definitely need to do is finishing off your syllabus. Finishing off your syllabus. Many would have completed the syllabus. I do agree. So, but again reread. Again reread. You should be ready with completion of syllabus by now ideally. But I know we all are humans. We will err. We, we won't be ideal at all. But still you know, uh, finish off syllabus. So, 12 to 15 days is the maximum limit per each paper. So, let us say you are reading two papers like GS 1 and 2 up karreo. Then, it will be around 25 to 30 days. Two papers you can do simultaneously. Okay, that means per day how many chapters we need to complete? So many, right? It's not that easy. Per day so many chapters. Let us say if each paper is divided into 6 sections or 7 sections. Every section will have around 10 to 12 chapters. Right? You would have seen the syllabus. Yeah. So you need to be finishing almost 5 to 8 chapters per day. So only I suggested your reading speed exercise initially. So that you can increase the reading abilities to finish your chapters quickly. Okay. So 10 to 12 to 15 days is maximum time to finish off your uh, per day uh, your syllabus paper. Now uh, within 50 to 60 days you will be finishing your syllabus. Right. Four papers. 50 to 60 days with every Sunday writing one essay. Okay. With every Sunday minimum you should attempt one essay. 50 to 60 date you should be finishing your syllabus. In hand you will be left with. For some people who have done the work already they will be left with 20 to 25 days. But those who haven't done will be left with 15 days. Right. 15 days will be 7 days. Or 8 days, 2 2 days each revision. One more reiteration. We are revising every paper for 2 2 days each. Okay. And then we are left with how many days? Almost 7 days. A day each revision. One day per paper revision. This is 2 days per paper revision. So, we will be left with last 2 to 3 days. Then 2 papers per day revision. So, don't underestimate the power of revisions. Because, let me tell you one simple statistic. You know, just look at your peers. Everyone 
can answer can tell about uh, you know indus valley civilization or uh, you know satvahana's rule or uh, what is uh, a polymer and uses of polymer in industries everyone will have basic idea no every one of you can answer if i give the such questions right now then how can you get a rank among you how can i pick right so those who revise more will have very depth understanding of the subject that is one thing that is one thing so knowledge is the base first of all without knowledge you can never acquire a rank first of all knowledge is the base now we'll see how to crack the rank using articulation of knowledge it is also called structured knowledge okay so without everyone will have the knowledge but having structural knowledge or articulation of ideas is the key to get a rank okay structural knowledge or articulation of ideas one simple thing i'll say if i ask you what is your name how many can answer what is your name every one of you can answer right yeah where did you where you have done your graduation or where you have finished your graduation every one of you can answer right yeah and then what the, what does your dad say uh, dad do what does your mother do, does so every one of you can answer where do you live every one of you can answer if i ask the questions individually so you all have that knowledge but i ask you about tell me a bio of yourself you might tend to forget one point or the other right you can't tell within that way or you might forget what your mother does you might be forgetting about your siblings okay or you might forget about uh, the place which you have studied your graduation right you have the knowledge but you are unable to articulate for the answer same happens with each and every one articulation or structuring of knowledge is quite important and for that we need to do many revisions first of all that is one prime thing three revisions three revisions at any cost don't miss within 12 to 15 days finish off and then two days revision and then one day revision and per day two subjects revision so that will complete four iterations right understood yeah that is mandatory and i have already told you how to increase the reading speed so it's up to you every day if you do the exercise 10 minutes on an average within 10 days your reading speed will be doubled i am doing that exercise since years so imagine my reading speed okay so that's what i have given you the talisman right so that is one thing and coming to structuring of knowledge structural knowledge as i said structural knowledge so as we discussed we have answers for each and every question but if it is given in the form of an essay or given in the form of a subjective question we'll tend to forget or we'll tend to knot them together so those who can knot them together in a very perfect way and make a beautiful package out of it will be the ranker and if if the beautification is quite large he'll be the first ranker okay so that's the simple thing but in order to achieve it there are many stages so we'll be talking about structural knowledge now so how can you structure out so we'll talk about general essay first of all okay and coming to general essay coming to general essay so one intro everyone know body of the essay conclusion so it seems pretty small right just write an introduction and then write body of the essay and then conclude the essay every one of you know that right so but i am here to tell you there are many sub sub components of it first let us talk about body of the essay okay so if i give you any word you should think a blueprint of it if i say education education you would have acquired so much knowledge regarding education till now 
reading so many newspapers, reading so many materials, reading history, polity, right? So if I say just an education, a word education, immediately you should be knowing pros and cons of education. Immediately you should be knowing, uh, you know, NEP. Immediately you should be knowing Kotari Commission. Immediately you should be knowing adult literacy, literacy rate, right? Every one of you know. I am not using any foreign jargon, right? But the only thing is you need to be writing them then and there. So instead of going to any essay, the first and foremost thing is you need to articulate its blueprint. So if any topic is given, for example, let us say education itself. So articulate its blueprint. So what should be written in main body? So how can I? differentiate education, how can I write an essay which is meaningful. So in your main syllabus, three words or three components have been given. That essay will be judged based on your articulation of ideas. Coherence and flow. And then originality of your ideas. So, your essay will be judged based on those three components. Okay? Articulation of ideas, coherence and flow of your essay and then originality of your ideas. Okay? Now, how to get those and how to work on main body of an essay? So, there are many ways work to work on main body of an essay. One is called Temporal component. Everyone know this? Don't know. That is past, present and future. So your main body can consist of a temporal component. Talking about past, talking about present and talking about future. So this is one kind of dealing with essay. There are so many types. This is one kind. Okay. So, let us say I have given you a, uh, you know, the evolution of science and technology. So, then you need to start with this component only, right? Because I said evolution of science and technology in India. A question has been put to you. Then immediately you need to write about temporal component in main body, okay? Intro and conclusion will deal with last, yeah. So, immediately you need to start with past, whatever happened in uh, you know in those decades or age old days and what is happening in current future and is what is going to happen okay you can touch the pushpaka vimana of mythology till drone flying or drone delivery everything you can write because originality of the ideas will fetch marks okay i'll i'll read out one of my essay as well for you and you might laugh at many of those but that is quite true. I am the topper standing here. So it worked right obviously. Yeah. So from Pushpaka Vimana to drone flying, you can write anything. Anything. Right? So that is one temporal component which you should be attending. Keep that in mind. And then sectoral components. Sectoral components which are primary, secondary and tertiary sectors. Everyone knows, right? What is primary, secondary, tertiary sectors? And then social media or media. And then science and technology sector. Whatever sector you are interested or whatever sector the question is related to, you will be mentioning about the sector. Let us say, what is the, uh, what do you think is the impact of AI? Artificial intelligence on, uh, you know, on gender equality. That is the question given. So then immediately we can say Siri can be uh, dealt in both male and female uh, voice. Right. So that itself is uh, one of the greatest gender equal platform we can ever see. Right. Siri can be dealt both in male and female language, f voice. How many knew that? Or everyone using Siri in only female lang female voice. So you can use it in male voice as well. Okay, Siri will respond to you in male voice. So sectoral component is quite important. 
and then the third one is one of the prominent which everyone will use d step d step remember it like that only d step what is d step demographical component economical component social component or social and uh, social component technological component environmental component political component okay d step please remember that whatever essay you are writing please think in those terms so you all have the knowledge whatever i give you will be able to write just imagine if you are thinking in that way so you will be having so many points to your mind right so think in a articulated way that's what i meant to say so that is very articulated way of writing anything and we'll see how to maintain coherence and flow and that as well but let me finish off with this okay so d step is the third one and fourth and last is centric component centric component will say which includes an individual first of all so how anything is impacting you as an individual and impacting as a community impacting it state level impacting it national level impacting it international understood understood let us say science and technology science and technology for me is quite useful because if i read in if i take a any science and technological course by itself i'll get placed i'll get good job i'll be economically strong a community can be actually protected with science and technology you can give an example and state can do better in science and technology covid 19 has come up so we have done uh, you know we managed pandemic so efficiently entire world is praising us you can write all those and uh, national component you know uh, nationally we are standing at so and so position uh, across the world and international components so you can talk about sdgs again whatever international component is there da uh, ek sdg dal do wahan pe one sdg you can give as an concluding point or international point please please buy out all the sdgs okay so don't just drop off sdg give the specific sdg okay sdg 3 or 4 or 5 poverty education health gender everything right so that concludes that actually gives a bigger picture agree or not agree yeah so you should be having temporal component in your main body sectoral component in your main body d step component and centric component understood or see not every essay asks for it but you need to mix and match what to present what not to present where to present where not to present that's up to you okay so you have been you know it it depends on uh, how you want to put your thoughts i can't regulate your thoughts or control your thoughts right so but uh, you can articulate in this way okay these are the four main components of any essay or any whatever might be you are reading a material so it will be in that component they'll fall in 1 2 3 4 3 or 4 so even even your textbooks fall in that even your uh, articles which you read daily will fall in those four, four components so this is not rocket science this is one of the very basic thing just to articulate or to accumulate your ideas okay but how actually you do or where you put your points is up to you okay yeah so understood can i erase yeah now coming to coherence and flow coherence and flow how to maintain coherence and flow of an essay quite important thing very most important many don't know because you all will be adopted very easily to writing in points 
So many of you will forget how to maintain the flow of an essay. Okay? It is very important because general essay should be written in an essay format. I, I was getting, uh, you know, after uh, pre, uh, pre results, I was getting doubts. Can essay be written in points? Someone asked me that doubt. Okay, it, it can be if you are mentioning, okay, there are five components of so and so act or policy or something, you can mention points there. But entire essay, if you are planning to write in points, so how you are making fool of yourself, right? I need not tell that again. So it should be a subjective question. They want to test your subjective skills. So why they are testing your essay writing abilities? Whether if you are put it, if you are kept in a solution, uh, so situation, sorry, if you are kept in a situation, will you be able to articulate the situation properly and write a report down in future if you become an officer? For that sake, they are testing your essay writing abilities, right? So that also if you are writing in points, you can't write points when you are writing a report to um, honorable chief minister or honorable prime minister, right? So you should be writing some paragraphs, you should be writing your arguments, you should be concluding it very properly, saying, you know, I support this and this, but I am seeking your, uh, you know, but I am seeking your view on the same. So likewise, you will be submitting it to your higher ups. So just they are testing the same ability of yours, okay? So coherence and flow, how can a coherence in para 1, coherence and flow is a link actually. So how can you create links? So one method there is, first and foremost method is, when you are dividing the component, main component or main body, you can say there and then itself in starting that you know the education can be looked up in various uh, various windows like uh, science and technological window, political window or in, uh, economical window or you need not use everything but demographical window. So now let us discuss, let us discuss or uh, focusing on science and technological window, focusing on science and technological window of education and you will write your points there. And then uh, firstly you will write, firstly focusing on science and technological uh, window of education. And then now if you are writing about uh, political, secondly political and technological and third para, fourth para you will not write and last if you are discussing you will write, lastly demographical window of education will have so and so components. Understood? So that will maintain the flow. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. That will maintain the coherence. Simply instead of writing one and point, two and point, you are mentioning it as, mentioning it as firstly, secondly, lastly. Okay? This is one thing. This is the first and foremost one, uh, that is numbering, we will say, coherence through numbering. But numbering in alphabetical way, not numbering means just not writing down as a number. Now coming to the second one, we will discuss questioning, questioning. Second one is questioning. You are going to pose a question at the end of your para. Okay? So let us say you are discussing about, okay, um, education again. At the end of the para, do current education or do present education is fulfilling the literary aims of our country? You will pose a question and then you will stop. Okay? And second para onwards, definitely yes and you will support or definitely not, you will oppose. Okay? Understood? So with questioning, you can maintain flow and coherence. Understood? Understood this component? 
so with numbering you can do with questioning you can do with grammatical things like hmm hmm no, no don't pose same question everywhere no you need to change your question and don't use uh, like again here uh, I, I get your question don't use same question everywhere for every para ending you need to pose the question according to your second para planned okay so whatever might be the second para you planned pose the question accordingly here no and write the second para okay don't pose same question till all five components you finish don't do that okay yeah and if you pose a very greater question like for example as i just asked do literacy uh, rate is supporting our aims of india again uh, definitely yes you can say and you can start all five components like science and technology polity economy environmental all five components firstly definitely yes firstly i am stating that so and so science and technology is supporting secondly i am stating that polity is supporting thirdly i am stating that economy is supporting lastly demographically it has been supported and uh, with this i can uh, we can strongly say that uh, definitely literacy component of india gets supported with current educational system okay and you can conclude that itself will give you around six or seven paras right yeah now this is one dimension of it you need to mix and match okay you uh, now again let us say you are talking about past present and future dimension so for that you know you will start your question with that itself temporal component itself you can start your question we'll talk about intro there and you can finish your uh, question with a uh, how can you conclude that also we'll talk later okay yeah any doubts till now done everyone understood what i'm speaking making sense or <laughs> have i wasted your uh, one and a half hour good and even if there is there is no escape for you i think so <laughs> so you need to listen even if i am not making sense okay so numbering and questioning coming to third one is language use like like in addition and you can start another para just to maintain flow furthermore you can start another para so using words like it um adding in further adding on further so likewise you can use in addition furthermore adding on further so those components you can add on one more para that only will maintain flow and coherence you can't start your para abruptly thinking that it is going with the flow it won't go with the flow and i can staunchly say if you write an essay here now here itself uh, most of you will fail to give a proper essay first of all because it is our ability to forget things or to divert in between answers because we are not well trained to write an essay and present an essay so it is a skill it should be practiced very perfectly and i am giving all the things so that you can practice well in those dimensions and you can come up with one uh, flying colors or when uh, good essay that's what my aim is to do yeah so adding on further further more in addition so what not you can use such adjectives or superlatives or whatever you want you can add and uh, you can make next paragraphs add on okay that's how you can link it so using language using questions using numbers okay that's how coherence and flow will be maintained in a essay yes so out of three components which upsc have given that it will judge or appsc have given it will judge essay what are the components articulation of ideas coherence and flow originality so we talk discussed about two things right now originality of the essay so now how you can make your essay, essay very original you would have read a, a column there or you would have read previous toppers essay somewhere how can you make it original you know 
here originality will actually be developed by telling stories or explaining anecdotes writing slokas someone asked me i said last time uh, we can write slokas in essay someone asked me in which language can we write write it in english only please don't amidst an english essay don't write again uh, sanskrit please don't do that you know you you need to write it in english only sloka and explain it you know keep it in inverted commas and explain what that meant okay you can write latin also in inverted commas so you can write quotes like veni vedi vesi that i came i saw i conquered or you can you can write kashmiri hami asto hami asto hami asto what what it means here only here only here only very good it's here it's here jahangir have quoted after seeing kashmir right so that's what the same you know when you are reading somewhere something one quote came to you so you can write all those okay uh, in kashmiri there is a, like let us say um, you know if you are giving any positive uh, component to your essay then you can write that ami hasto ami hasto ami hasto here only here only here only i want to see that change right so as simple as that so but that will actually will catch the eye of an examiner right instead of saying uh, you know very positively i hope india should become superpower uh, within 10 to 20 years but india will become superpower ami hasto ami hasto ami hasto examiner will definitely see what what the gibberish you have written over there and will understand okay it is in kashmir again you need to say okay it is kashmiri quoted by jahangir and then recoated by jawaharlal nehru when they visited kashmir right so all these things you need to uh, so i i wish the same for india that people should uh, you know recollect this quote again and again and should willfully see india as a superpower within coming 10 to 20 years that's how you will conclude right so that three words have captured examiner side you might have written a para or three paras or four paras prior no one would have watched it properly right so that's how those impactful words will actually make the difference so only telling stories explaining anecdotes slokas other language quotes also i'll say so all this will give originality or any ideas also you can put in any ideas also you can put in that will give originality to your essays okay here i want to stop and i want to read one thing for you so till now my answer scripts aren't out yet so this is the first time i'm reading okay so one small question has been posed to me people are sheep tv is the shepherd okay people are sheep tv is the shepherd that's the question understood understood those who didn't got the question raise your hands okay so that means tv is actually making us do things so we are getting carried away with the media we are under media's influence okay that's what the question means right understood so this is the answer i have given which i got pretty uh, pricings for so this is my mock essay okay so in the era of 21st century media and tv are the third industrial revolution tv penetrated from space to antarctica and i have witnessed the rise of mankind to become a modern man our day starts with a brunch of morning bulletin and ends with a dinner of 9 pm news we are all aware and well informed with our handy toy the mighty cell about the world in the form of news shots thumbnails videos etc 
we all are interested in our own tabloids from Karina's son to Kohli's wedding. We'll never miss a single shot. We'll stick to our TV sets until our cricket 2020 ends with a loud roar and a corresponding pro kabaddi spree begins. We'll all be well equipped with topics of debate at offices from the very source of crime petrol, crime dust, etc. We'll clap for our India's achievements. We'll watch live the MOM MOM launch and the inauguration of INS. We'll enjoy a sneak peek of our mother's Saas Bahu soaps. We'll laugh for Kapil Sharma's jokes. We'll rage on Arnab's arrogance. We'll be soothed with PM's man ki baat. So I, I have covered it. So everyone knows that, right? Have I missed anything? So we have been carried away with all of those or not? Right? So but see the articulation over there. Right? I haven't missed anything. I articulated it pretty well. That's why. And again, coming to next para. All this gamut and varied information from little meager things to mighty major things is only happening because of our one and only Sati, our favorite, the TV set. So I have used another language there as well, Sati, right? Which is a Hindi word. But still, it is very prominent that no one questioned it, right? With it, we are always well informed, well updated, ready to face the world, but we are missing a crucial link. Are we well differentiated? Do the news we adore so much and stick to have another perspective? Are we always fed with correct facts or just our minds are brainwashed to believe the stuff which is being displayed? So three questions I posed there. Okay? Have you observed? Have you listened, right? So I want to show but uh, there is no thing. So that's why I am reading it out loud for you. Yeah. So with such questions in mind, so you can pose multiple questions as well. Uh, okay, uh, so here all the three questions mean the same, but I posed with uh, three different words. See, are we well differentiated or are we always fed with correct facts or just our mind, uh, minds are just brainwashed to believe whatever is uh, getting displayed. Okay, with such questions in mind, we can go with a famous quote. TV is a make-believe instrument. It makes us fools and we believe it foolishly. So again, I am stating the question in between. TV is sheep, uh, people are sheep, TV is shepherd. Okay. So just I am rephrasing it as into another quote in between the, in between the essay. With the rise of technology and live telecast, there are no limits on TV industry. We can watch the live videos of rape, murder in HD quality. It is the time to search for the other side of the coin, the other perspective of the story. We should question the ethics of telecasting. We should object it if it is crossing its limit. Though our Ministry of Information and Broadcasting came up with the viewer's discretion feedback, many will see, you know, viewer's discretion is advised. Research shows that it is utilized only 2% of, uh, of TV users out of 93% TV users in India. That defines we are just accepting the telecast without knowing the real truth. So the awareness of the viewers should be increased so that only the true news should be telecasted. The era of one-way communication ended long back. It is the era of feedback and customization. So we should request the hap true happenings, real stories, multidimensional views. With the digitalization of dish TVs, it is a bit possible to control what we view. But our TV viewing should shift to extreme customization. We should follow the US model of Netflix or uh, our, uh, hot star, uh, our star's model of hot star. Uh, where the ideas flow, flow freely without any bias, where we select what we watch. Recently, we have seen the Rajman's murder. So, recent happenings also I have mentioned there. The cruelty, uh, you know, a laborer has been killed and the video has been circulated across India. The cruelty with which a laborer has been murdered shook the country. But where is the discretion? Should extreme form of violence shouldn't be telecasted? The idea should be removed totally from every source of net or uh, sorry, the video should be removed from uh, totally from every source of net. It should be our government's responsibility to dictate a threshold of violence which can be viewed. A similar instance happened in Australia with a wildlife conservationist called Steve Irwin. Okay. So he got attacked by a stingray on a live camera. The telecast has been stopped and the letter broadcasted by clipping of the bits of violent attack. It shows the sensibility, the selection of what to broadcast and what not to 
should always be monitored. People will watch whatever is broadcasted as mostly the middle class women and the poor families are the loyal friends of TV sets. So it is the government's discrimination to not make every audience mere sheep and the TV as shepherd. Okay? And then lastly I concluded with as Tagore said, where the mind is without fear, where the head is held high. Entire quote I quoted and lastly I said we are still in search of such freedom. I concluded. And I got good marks for that essay, that is my mock essay. Okay? So I just read that out for you. Why? Because uh, you know um, I have covered all the things which I have used in my essay over there. You know, I, I told about all the present future things. I used the rhyming also, like you would have observed, Karina's son to Kohli's wedding, we never miss anything. So, rhyming KK, it started Kapil Sharma's jokes, that also started with K. So, every component have been taken care of in the essay. So, only uh, it was uh, given to one of the mentor, character, and it has been corrected and I scored well in mock essay. So, we talked about coherence and flow and have you observed coherence and flow there? So, I questioned myself thrice and I told and we need to talk about, discuss about uh, introduction and conclusion still. So, one of the best conclusions ever, one of the best conclusions ever is Tagore's quote, okay? Where the mind is without fear, where the head is held high, please by heart whole quote. Trust me, it will help you in one or the other, it will fetch you one or two marks extra. So, that is one of the best conclusion because that is very ideal case of a situation, right? Very ideal case of a country or very ideal case of the whole world, right? So, if you say that and we are in the same path or as we say it is still yet to be achieved. So, entire quote you can say and you can conclude it, right? And coming to introduction, introduction, what should be there as an introduction or you can conclude with very uh, nice anecdotes and stories as well. I will read out few more things for you. I want to make you work out on few things but as we have wasted half an hour, I just want to read out um, very fastly a few things. So, I will read out one more essay for you. Please pay attention. I will finish off. I will read it off quickly. So, social networking, a great invention or the end of privacy? Okay. A, an essay on social networking which I have written. So, as it has been dealt three years back, so I do not remember what I have written, but I have scanned my copy for you and I got it. So, that is what. So, and I want to play it, but as there is no project, oh, projector is there, but still anyhow, I am reading it out for, loud for you. Yeah. <laughs> so, social networking, a great invention or the end of privacy. I started with communication itself because uh, social networking is another form of communication, right? Communication is the key to excel at anything. Since the time immemori immemorial, the role of communication always used to make or break kingdoms, relations, negotiations, etc. Aswadhamma hatha kunjaraha. A misled communication of Yudhishthir to Dronacharya, the commander-in-chief of Kauravas, made him leave his Divyasras, which ultimately led to the victory of Pandavas in Kurukshetra battle. Sita Paharnam Lanka Dahanam. A dictum which is neglected by Ravana made him to kidnap Sita, which ultimately led to the fall of the Lanka. Do you know about these stories? Anyone don't know? Okay, you need to know. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, in Lanka, there will be Sita Paharnam Lanka Dahanam on an arch. So, if you, uh, if you kidnap Sita, so Lanka will be collapsed. Eventually, there won't be Lanka anymore. Every day, Ravana used to see that, but still he kidnapped Sita. Right? So, a dictum which he has neglected. Right? And same happened in Kurukshetra battle. 
you know aswadama hatah kunjara aswadama is name of dronacharya son also and uh, an elephant also so that is one lie told by yudhishthir yudhishthir or dharmaraju is the one who will never lie dharmaraju is yudhishthir okay so uh, uh, he will never lie so but uh, you know they made him lie they told that aswadama hatah that means aswadama has dud but it is the elephant so he uh, he told loudly that uh, aswadama has dud but in a very small tone that it is an elephant because the elephant named aswadama has dead so dronacharya thought that it is his son dead and immediately he left his divyastras which led to the victory of pandavas okay so that is the role of communication that's what i meaning to say over there yeah so these incidents portray the importance of communication as very crucial for a kingdom to prosper see i have used a temporal component you know i started with mythology have you observed past yeah and then i'll come to history and then i'll conclude see since ancient times in order not to mess up the communications every kingdom have used a spokes person to convey the messages to people royal messenger to convey messages to nearby kingdoms vegas the secret messengers who will accumulate intelligence reports of neighboring kingdoms the egyptian civilization started using eagles as messengers the trend penetrated into india with muslim rurals uh, rulers who introduced us to communications using kabutar right pigeons yeah earlier days it is uh, to be in touch with each other in the base of net uh, is the base of networking and for that communication is the key then with colonial era we got introduced to postcards inland letters envelopes as well as telegrams for faster communication see how i have started from past to present right everywhere how the kingdoms the, did it how the colonial era did it and then morse code is used for secret communication by the armed forces with grahambal's invention of telephone we entered the era of fastest communication with internet and with email we touched the peaks of communication in the form of one touch technology where our dear ones are just a click away to communicate have i touched everything anything under the sun is left in the form of communication no that's how that's how you'll articulate your ideas with one component either temporal or uh, a d step component which we have discussed right internet also paved way for social networking the zeal of being in touch with everyone we know well just one click gave the premise for 6 degrees 6 degrees is uh, the first social networking site in the late 90s this trend continued with intra college networking sites among elite universities which gave life to friendster myspace etc when the social networking is rising google entered and captured the market with its orkut with uh, further innovation facebook twitter slayed of the orkut and became the major players of social networking the power of communication networking is strengthening day by day and it is transforming into a giant but the question rises again i question because my flow got finished now i need to question something okay so but the question rises regarding the privacy now are we that safe with our lives online do we sacrifice our privacy for a 20 gb space on universal server okay right 20 gb space and we'll upload our important documents our bank number screenshots our password screenshot in universal server right these questions are bound to be answered social networking now became a necessary evil we need it for everything with it we can recruit online via linkedin we can blog on youtube we can connect with our friends on facebook we talk to our parents on skype so it penetrated into our lives inside out now there is no looking back we need to learn the learn the paddling and be safe or else we may sink because it become inevitable in our lives now we can't go back and uh, you know we can't stay aloof saying that i won't be using any social networking site that is foolishness because entire world uses it but at the same time we need to learn paddling with it that's what i'm i'm talking right cyber security is the solution to tackle privacy issues a brief understanding of the pros and cons should be made aware to the networking users proper parental locking should be available for the kids to access networking sites updated disclaimer should be should pop up warning the cons updated technology can be used to tackle the privacy issues end to end end to end encryption should be given to prevent the leakage of personal messages photo protect should be provided to safeguard our snaps from others to download everything you know right if you are using facebook or if you are using whatsapp this is what we are dealing every day right photo protect end to end encryption so just it is that putting your knowledge into an order 
in those formats. That's what I meant to say. So give me two more minutes. I won't eat your brain. Yeah. So, and then inbuilt anti-malware should be provided to filter off unauthorized sites. With all these measures, we can't 100% shield our privacy invasion, but we can definitely tackle it for sure. So tackling here doesn't mean that throwing off our personal veil of privacy, but in order to be on social networking, our basic information will be accessible to everyone. We should be aware of the extent of privacy we are losing and for what gains. In the end, it is our own consensus, consensus to continue with our social networking accounts or not. They are easy to create and much easier to delete to. Right? So we shouldn't be accepting the joy of social networking at the cost of too much invasions into our personal space. A basic information availability is mandated everywhere. Now with technological advancements, we can easily be incognito to access the social networking too. With the time, social networking will transform into a giant. So we should have proper controls and the dexterity to control the giant. If not, uh, the boon will turn into a bane. Our information is fire and the social networking sites will be gasoline. So we should always be on watch to balance both. If so, then we can staunchly say that social networking will be the coolest thing mankind has ever invented to entertain oneself. Okay? Thank you. But uh, have you found it articulated? Yes. Have the thoughts put in good? Well, so that's how you should be writing. Because, uh, see, what happens means, uh, once you get the flow of thoughts, you need to, uh, you know, make a blueprint of your thoughts, first of all. In intro, what are the quotes you are going to do? How to conclude it? So, I want to conclude it as a fire and gasoline. So, we should be knowing, tackling both. If we keep together, they will burn, obviously. Right? So, there are many such scenarios where one will be fire, one will be gasoline. We should be balancing both. So, only I have read that essay for you because you can balance both. So, do you have time for one more essay? Shall I read one more ethical essay? PDF I will share with anyone. Okay. My writing will be bad. Don't mind. <laughs> I don't have that good of a writing, but I will share the PDF. So, this is one ethical essay. Will mankind ever find peace? Okay, that's the, that's the question. Will mankind ever find peace? So, for that also I answered because I prepared so well for it. Uh, I don't know the question prior, but I answered and uh, you know the flow of essay was very good and I have been appreciated and uh, I just want to read it out for you because it's a story first of all. You know, it's a story of Mahaprasthana. So what happens in uh, Mahaprasthana is, so Mahaprasthana is walk till death. Okay. So the elite people, uh, the uh, kings like Pandavas, Kauravas, they haven't died. They did Mahaprasthana at their end. So that means they walk till they fall fallen off on the earth. Okay. So what happened in Mahaprasthana? All the Pandavas and Draupadi is also walking. The first one who will fall off is Draupadi only, right? Uh, because she is the weaker among all. So there there is Bhima, there is Arjuna who are strongest men, and the last one to stand again here also will be Dharmaraj, Yudhishthir. Will see death of his wife and all the brothers and he will be the ultimate one to stay. So, then Krishna will come and question, you know, what is the Mahakasta you have faced in your lives to each and every one. Okay. So, then everyone will, will tell one one, uh, one one Mahakasta or the greatest sorrow they have undercome during the last phase of their lives. So, when questioned to Bhima, he will say, Shudba the Mahakasta. That means hunger is one of the greatest sorrow. So, that's what Bhima will say. What about Arjuna? He will say, Putra Sokam Mahakastam. Because he has lost his son, right? So, he will say, Putra Sokam Mahakastam. And what about uh, um, Draupadi? Mm, she will say, uh, Aranyavasam Mahakastam. Because she, is, she has been a queen, right? So, but she has been kept in Aranyavasa for 14 uh, long years, right? And one year of Agnyatavasa, right? 
So, Aranya Vasam is very tough because I, I have been a queen. I have uh, raised like a queen and here I need to procure food also. There I have everything. Now, this is the life. And uh, finally, he asked the Yudhishthar, what is the Mahakasta? So, he thinks that Yudhishthar is the intellectual one. He might answer pretty great. Then Yudhishthar will say, uh, Jara Vasudeva Jara Kasta. That means Krishna, uh, old age is one of the Mahakasta. Okay. So, then Krishna will be in very, uh, uh, he'll laugh sarcastically saying, see, in the last path of their life, still uh, they are in their last, last path of their life, still they are unable to find peace. They are thinking about Mahakastas instead of the happiness in their lives. So, with that I have started, will mankind ever find peace? With that story I have started. Once Pandavas were on their last mission of Mahaprastha, that is, because Mahaprastha don't know, everyone don't know, so we need to explain if we are using another language words. Okay? That is the walk to death. As they are walking, Krishna inquires with them the true sadness they experienced in their entire life. Krishna wants to know about the Mahakasta, the greatest sadness. To, so Krishna first approaches Draupadi, the queen of Pandavas. She will be gasping and ask Krishna about his visit. The Krishna will question Draupadi that what is Mahakastam in your life. Without any hesitation, she replies Aranyavasam Mahakastam. That is leading life in forest is the toughest and saddest part of her life. Then Krishna will ask what is Mahakastam to Bhima. He replies Kshudba the Mahakastam. That is hunger is the true sadness in, in his life. Now Krishna will approach Arjuna and will ask the same. What is the Mahakastam? He, re he replies Putra Sokam Mahakastam. So losing a son is the true sadness. As Arjuna will lost his beloved son Abhimanyu in the battle of Kurukshetra. Finally, Krishna will ask the same question, what is Mahakastam to Dharmaraj, the eldest of the Pandavas. He replies, Vasudeva Jara Kastam. That is, O Krishna, getting old is the true sadness. So, all these are extracts from Amar Chitrakata. Okay, I have, I have read a lot, so I, I can produce a story just like that. But writing a story with these many characters in that line also requires practice. You can't just attempt a story just like that. See, there are so many characters here, but I am able to express that in English. So, that is an art and uh, you need to develop that art. For that, you need to tell small stories first. You can't just plunge into uh, the bigger stories yet. Okay? So, if you write frequently, you will be actually knowing how to write a story of. Yeah. Krishna will listen to the every Maha custom told by Pandavas and will repent thinking that even on their Mahaprasthan, greatest warriors, intellectuals, good humans like Pandavas, uh, themselves are just thinking about their true sadness but are not concerned about the eternal peace. Then Krishna realizes that men will be after peace in their whole life but won't find one as they still carry their sad past with them. Okay? And then I will start. Again, I have started with the mythology as a story and I will I will touch each and everything. Please spare two more minutes. This is the uh, sad something I have, uh, it got sad story I think. Sad story of human tendency. Uh, men, even though evolved into a super species, developed in the nature like no species else, was still in search of something and is not in peace yet. Some are staunch believers of their duty, that is the Nishkama Karma, the deontological path. Some are so happy with the ends, the consequentialist path. Some want a bit of both worlds in turn to become perfectionists. But even with all these, did men ever find peace? That's a million dollar question itself. So for every ethical essay, point to be noted. So you need to raise questions in between, the same question. Will men ever find peace itself? So that should be repeated in the whole essay three or four times for ethical essays. Okay? If you are attempting an ethical essay, please keep that in mind. Our uh, Varnashrama Dharma spoke about Vanaprastashrama is a way to attain peace. Our Purushardas highlighted that at the end everyone are going to attain moksha to be at peace. Buddha's principle of desire is the root cause of all the sorrows made everyone follow his Ashtanga Marga to attain peace. So I have touched each and everything, right? Jaina's five principles and the Salekana, that is the fast unto death, were followed to attain peace. Maslow came up with his hierarchy of needs from basic needs like hunger and sleep to the highest higher end needs like self-actualization. Even by trying all these, did humans ever attain the peace beyond themselves? Now we can say some might have attained it in their religious alignments, but many might not. Now comes the question of what is peace? How can we define it? 
We can say the piece is mainly a vent out system from the mundane chores, from the burden of responsibilities and from the common rat race. We can even say that peace is a myth. It is an idealistic emotion which never exists in reality because it is an ethical essay. Okay? You cannot write the same in science and technological essay. Mm. We always try our entire lives with various means to reach it or at least try to bridge the gap between realistic self and the idealistic self. It is the process of bridging the gap to attain idealistic. Mm. In the process of bridging the gap to attain idealistic peace, we quench the thirst of knowledge. We study. We discover. We will become wise. We help the society to uplift the poor. We alleviate poverty. We earn money. We give a shot at everything we possibly can just to find that peace of peace. In the cycle of wanting to find peace, we will be responsible, we will keep goals, we will work for it, we achieve it and we will search for some new goals. This short spans of achieving goals, succeeding at something will make us confident and we will uh, we'll own some more burden of responsibility. This is a vicious cycle. Agree? So now we are in the era of millennials where everything is instant. If you want to talk with anyone, we will call. If you want to meet anyone, we will catch a plane. If you want to learn anything, we will Google it. If you want to eat anything, we cook instant food. So aligning peace with this mindset will be instant too. Right. Till then, uh, if you go to Vanaprastha Ashrama, so peace will be attained. That is what we have been told. But how mankind will find peace in this millennial era? That is my question. Okay. So, with the development of, uh, yeah. So, aligning peace with that mindset will be instant too. The millennials are such a restless and literally very less patient generation. They can find peace by winning a temple run, feeding a tamagachi, counter-striking a zombie on a virtual world instantly. Right? So, that is how we will find peace, no? We will we'll play a PUBG or we will find a counter-strike, counter zero. And, uh, you know, if we kill 10 zombies, we will be very happy. We will sleep with so much of dopamine. Right? So, that is how we will find peace. So, that is what I mentioned. With the development uh, of, uh, yeah, with the development of such a mindset, we cannot work on Vanapastha, Ashrama, Moksha, Sallekana anymore because they are not instant. We may leave our responsibilities for a while and declare that we have attained peace, but eventually we will fall back into the loop of finding idealistic peace by doing realistic jobs and it is continuous. As the story of Pandavas depicts that one cannot find peace even in their walks of death, we can peacefully conclude that we can never find peace eternally. Peace is like a Pandora's box or Chidamba Rahasya. We will still in search for it, but we will never find it. The woods may, may be dark and deep, but we have our promises to keep, so we have miles to go before we sleep. So, that is how I conclude. So, how is the, how is the essay for you? It is, it is fun to read, right? It is actually attracting you to read, right? So, that is how your essay should be. So, how that can be achieved? So, I gave you the crux of it. So, you need to think about temporal components. You need to think about these steps. You need to think from mythology to current technology. Okay? And any other things which you want to ask? So, I am concluding here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we will we'll take the doubts. Uh, so, I am concluding here um, the workshop. I actually want to give how to read quickly. So, that I have given. I actually want you to work on your bio because um, there are three different uh, uh, sectors or sections in essay questions, right? One is socio-political. So, for that you need to have prepared on women-centric essays, education-centric health centric. So, definitely one will come. Okay. And political scenarios, COVID-19. And there is third um, section of essays on your civic sense. Okay. So, in that last year essays, if you have seen directly civic sense essay question has been given like that. So, prepare an essay on civic sense. Your public speaking experience, they asked last time. So, they are bound to ask you your experiences. So, you be ready to tell a story then and there. So, for that you need to prepare your own story in a very well articulated way. So, all of you should be Rajamaulis and should make one more RRR to get a rank. Right? So, if you make three R's, you will get one more R. What is that? Rank. Yeah. So, that is I will, with that I will conclude, okay? Yeah. Now, coming to questions. Yeah, tell me.
both both which will fall under which category which will fall under which category social centric comes then out of the four which we have discussed d step only d step sectoral centric centric so individually what are the schemes like for every individual and then for community what are the state schemes right what are the schemes in india and please correlate the schemes from international schemes as well like for example universal health coverage so which international country first introduced it and where is ayushman bharat going on where is arogya sri standing over there so you need to correlate all three then only it will look full if not something will be missing you will never get that mark okay so and trust me there are people over there who can write everything yeah so understood yeah any other questions yes yeah for trend analysis very good question so believe me there will be a trend analysis question for sure in appsc i think uh, steel imports or exports is the trend and uh, coming to a little bit about your uh, answering uh, gs questions okay so you will be given either or or option like either right a or b so every question to question choice will be there i'll get to you trend analysis question please remind me that one so you have two choices now you have a strong knowledge of a strong knowledge of a okay but a is having four or five sub questions sub questions you have uh, sorry you have not strong medium knowledge of a a is having five sub questions strong knowledge of b b is having one single question okay only one question which you will pick up a or b again i am posing the question very strong knowledge and only one single question but medium knowledge five sub questions which you will pick how many will go for a medium knowledge and a okay how many will go for b okay please go for a okay because what happens um let us say for example you know um there is one question last year there is uh, uh, you know uh, point out the differences between rajya sabha lok sabha and uh, do you think lok sabha is superior to rajya sabha in what ways uh, explain so all these are questions okay four questions so you can point out four differences or three differences definitely everyone will be knowing right how uh, uh, rajya sabha is superior than lok sabha in what components you can mention those articles or lok sabha is superior than rajya sabha in two two points and uh, finally uh, you will be explaining uh, you know uh, the balance of both and you will conclude the question so what happens when you know the uh the counter script or uh, the blueprint of answer correction comes for every sub question there will be few points like uh, let us say you are having five 10 uh, marks for the question and two marks for this two marks for this two marks two marks two marks so if you are able to fulfill all the five criteria of sub question so even if you are getting half there is minimum five marks you'll get with a medium knowledge with a medium knowledge but you have strong knowledge and they asked what are the five dimensions of indian constitution so that is the opposite question i think there as well what are the five dimensions of indian constitution so you can write about so many dimensions of indian constitution but what happens you know you might not excel at presenting it very elegantly and you might end up getting 4.5 or 3 or 4 not uh, because half mark is the highest mark you all will be knowing out of 10 5 or 5.5 is highest mark okay so who will win uh, the race obviously the people who have selected a will win the race even though they have a medium knowledge okay so that is one tip uh one more tip 
I am getting so many questions on GS. Shall I write? Uh, shall I draw diagrams? Shall I draw draw diagrams? If there is a question on hybrid oma technology, will you draw draw a diagram? What is hybrid oma technology? First of all, okay. <laughs> you need to learn your science and technology first of all. Okay. Uh, or uh, let us say cloning. Okay. Monoclonal antibodies, there is directly it is there, no? What are monoclonal antibodies? The technology of pro production of monoclonal antibodies is called hybrid homo technology. Okay? So, if there is a question on cloning, will you draw a diagram? Yes or no? Yes. How many will say yes? How many will go for no? No, no, you need to. And what about nuclear fusion and fission? Will you draw, draw a diagram? How many will draw a diagram? Yeah. So, for science and technological question, wherever it is relevant, please draw a diagram. That is quite relevant, relevant. Okay. Wherever it is relevant, draw a diagram. So, do not miss out a question. Okay. Where diagram relevancy is there. And for geography, draw a map. Okay. If at all uh, geographical question comes state wide or you are explaining country wide, please draw a map. And for economy, Draw a table. Do not hesitate to draw a table coming to trend analysis. So, so and so year, these many exports happened. Why? Pros and cons. Okay? That is how you need to tackle a trend analysis question. Pay attention. Year, exports or imports. So, every year 2016, 17, you need to buy hard the numbers, no other go. And then, what is the figure? Let us say in 2016 there is 173 metric tons. Now here 160 metric tons. Why? Why it has been reduced? Okay, two points. Pros and cons. Reduction ha has been helpful or it has been dreadful. Okay, two points at every stage. Okay, so then suddenly there is increase of 220 metric tons, let us say. So why there is such a huge increase? Reason? Pros and cons. Pros of increasing, cons. Okay. So that's how you'll track tackle trend analysis questions. Any other any other doubts? In essay also you can, uh, but uh, until unless it, if it is damn necessary. Let us say, see if you are just. Um, I have seen many people who will draw one triangle or one star will tackle every point over here. So, and so that does not make any sense. You are giving that as side headings, right? So, yeah, your diagram should complement your essay or whatever you are writing. It is not key. It is same you are doing it. So, I am so and so. I have read so and so and my work is so and so. So, you are writing your name, your work, your place has three components and you are drawing one huge triangle just to fill the paper. Please do not do it. Okay? So, it should complement. It is not you are just producing the same does not make any difference. It should complement the question. So, if you are unable to because science and technology you cannot explain what is hybrid homo technology in words totally. So, you can say okay there is one plasmid over there. We are cutting that plasmid using one enzyme. And then uh, once a plasmid is cut, we will use this part and we will insert into a cell. You know, it will come into the cell and then it can be cloned into multiple things. So, with a diagram, it can be explained well. So, only you need to draw a diagram. Okay? And every question, if uh, and a few more tips for writing. So, make sure you think about the question within one minute or less than one minute and you should be able to complete your question with a diagram within 7.5 minutes. So, hardly you will get 8.5 to 9 minutes per a question. If you are taking time initially to write elaborately, okay, you are going to be doomed. Every question should be equally given weightage. And one more rule, do not leave any question, attempt something. First, attempt the questions you know pretty well, pretty strong. And what is the maximum time for a question? 
सेवन पॉइंट फाइव प्लस वन प्लस सेवन पॉइंट फाइव एट पॉइंट फाइव मैक्सिमम नाइन मिनट्स सो प्रैक्टिस इन सच ए वे दैट यू फिनिश योर क्वेश्चन एंड अ डायग्राम विद इन नाइन मिनट्स हाउ हाउ यू विल गेट दैट टाइम दैट आइडियल टाइम बाय डायली प्रैक्टिस इफ यू आर राइटिंग योर क्वेश्चन मिनिमम टू और थ्री आंसर्स इफ नाइन मिनट्स इज फिनिश यू नीड टू लीव योर क्वेश्चन लाइक दैट सो प्रैक्टिस इन सच ए वे सो यू शुड बी फोर्स टू राइट you should be alert in your exam all the hours you know finishing the questions every question should be equally given importance 9 minutes finish write a question so that you can finish the answer and draw a diagram and you need to think about the question how you will approach the question for one minute essay also uh, in general essay i am saying within 30 to 40 minutes you should have your blueprint and remaining 2 hours you should be writing 3 questions right you should be writing 3 questions keep a grace period of 15 minutes because mostly it is tab examination again you need to uh, move tab and it might be in sleep mode again you need to see a question and then you you need to write an answer right the questions will come in tablets so that will be again time taking if you are seeing the question and attempting and let us say imagine you are on last question you finished 14 and 15th question almost time is there hardly 2 minutes left so you are unable to write anything you know you have the knowledge only as a last mile only as a last mile please keep this in mind draw a flow chart okay draw a flow chart only as a last mile if hardly one or two minute left but you can't don't want to leave a question draw a flow chart at least half mark or one mark you'll get okay so that will save up your uh, examination okay understood and go with a ball point pen gel pen is not allowed till date but uh, i think we might um, you know some are requesting for gel pens we might get the circular don't underline though underlining is prohibited it was specifically mentioned so what you need to do for subheadings you need to box it up okay or leave a space let us say this is subheading leave a space and then write okay how many pages you need to write an answer how many pages you need to write an answer how many words a essay is eight hundred words is a p p s c essay okay so but it is not exactly 800 they mentioned about 800 and many will write 1200 to 1500 so be prepared for it so 1200 to 1500 words is your word limit okay please don't miss it so with all the components which i have given if you try to articulate your ideas you will get almost 1000 words another 200 words put up your own story over there you become the rajmouli of your own okay right and uh, yeah for uh, normal questions gs 1 2 3 4 questions you know the sides of how many sides of booklet you need to write this is one this is two another paper you will open up right three you need to fill all three for all questions trust me people will write three three sides you need to fill so let us imagine there is a diagram another two you need to write okay but no, don't mandatorily fill rubbish or gibberish over there okay but that is the trend and uh, and we hope like our marks are officially not at out but i think this last time the competition itself is pretty tough this time it's going to be tougher and we if we have observed the trends of last two group one examinations of appsc you know hardly there will be difference between first and second ranker for 10 or 15 marks and third ranker for 3 or 4 or 5 marks and fourth ranker onwards you know it will be half mark one mark two mark half mark one mark two mark that's the difference and some might get same marks as well but based on their um, you know um, their daf you know they'll be given rankings so please keep that in mind so every question is equally important and you need to wage a war with each and every question and eventually you need to win the battle okay any other any other doubts any other doubts
I want to hear some doubts from you. So we almost covered every part of. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But not mandatory. You can write. Ah. Uh, you can write about only. It has been mentioned. Yeah. For test series, I got a doubt that uh, you know. Ah. Uh, you know. Can I write test series after completion of my syllabus? That is a grave mistake. Big blunder. Don't do it. Okay. You should be doing your test series parallelly, even though you are prepared, even though you are unprepared. Writing is the key. Your knowledge you have built, you almost have. If you have cleared prelims, you almost have sixty percent of the knowledge. The another forty, even if you study hard, and uh, you know you have put in your two hundred percent efforts, you will acquire twenty percent more knowledge. That's it. So you can't be hundred percent self-sufficient till before the day of examination. So, with that notion, you'll skip your uh, uh, exam. Okay, test series exam. Please don't do it. Finish your tests on time. Okay, whatever test might be, because expect bouncers this time in mains examination. The question won't be direct. It will be very tricky, very clumsy. You need to for understanding question itself. It, it might take two minutes for you, but we have reduced it to one minute. So, how you will actually get that ability? how you will uh, get that ability of thinking the question about the question within one minute if you answer test series right so whatever you know you go and put the answers and come what might what might happen hardly you will get zero nothing else no you won't get negative marks zero you will get okay prepared for zero okay go write the test series finish off you know at least practice that thing you know in within one minute i'll understand the question within seven minute i'll write the question And I'll answer all the questions. I'll make sure every question is three pages without knowing anything. Go and write a test like that. So that confidence which you'll get after writing such tests, no, it will be marvelous. You'll think that tomorrow, if there is mains exam, I can finish off. You know, please be prepared for that. Okay, and don't ever think that okay after reading whole five papers with general essay, I'll have full fledged preparation. i'll be mark zuckerberg and i'll invent facebook nothing such sorts happens okay everyone no one in the world can finish the whole syllabus on time okay trust me it is very tedious process but writing saves writing only saves your skin okay so every day minimum three questions weekly one test one essay keep a proper mentor uh, you know they are providing mentorship you know go to your mentor eat their brains Okay, so how to do? Where I went wrong? What should I improve? You know, wherever it is, uh, write uh, whatever might be the question. Write some advantages, write some disadvantages, write some scope of the subject. You know, you all know, you all know. There is, you know, just keeping side headings only. You will get three or four points for everything. You have prepared that much, no? Just you see, that's what. till the day of uh, examination if you are just sharpening your tools when are you going to use the tools right so you need to learn how to use your tools skillfully so you have knowledge you are preparing since years so there are hardly few group one aspirants over here many of you would have been upsc aspirants you know you might have given one or two attempts of upsc and group one have cracked you cracked group one pre so you have come all the way over here So three years, three long years. Even though in between you are playing your Counter Strike and PUBG, but still you have studied, right? All that knowledge will culminate into test or answers. Okay. So please don't hesitate in writing a test. Please don't hesitate in overthinking your knowledge. So you should actually vomit your knowledge wherever you go. Okay. That should be your motto. So you have knowledge. Put it to some use. You know, write a damn question. whatever you know put it into one question so it will you will get points there is no such thing as i am less knowledgeable you know my preparation is not up to the mark no 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 you haven't practiced writing an answer that is not up to the mark practice writing answers even though you don't know a b c of it you know you practice writing an answer okay so practice 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 first day if you read your answer you laugh at your own answer trust me and you yourself will give minus 10 marks to your answer 10th day you will give one mark 
but you should go through that 10 days it's like going to a gym you know first day you will sweat it out for 3 hours but your weight is same okay it will never be reduced so after going down for 20 days you will reduce half kg right same happens right same happens with answer writing after writing down 10 days religiously follow the ritualism you know 10 days religiously your answer will improve drastically so you need to see that change for that change you need to write down your answers daily there is no other goal. okay so i have given you the read speeding i have given you tips for answer writing what else you want yeah huh science and technology i have uh, prepared from inadu news articles and uh, hindu news articles and i am a basically science and tech student so my bsc is in biotechnology i am topper of batch kind of thing so i have and i have done in biotechnology so most of the um, parts are from biotechnology only so i don't need don't even need to prepare those i have i skipped many for environment, I used Shankar environment material and ICSC environmental textbooks. AP bifurcation, I have read uh, AP bifurcation textbook, I think uh, P. Sharma, P. S. Sharma or one blue color small textbook will be there. Um, he has written three textbooks. Uh, one is, I will tell you which one. I ordered it from Amazon only. So, Shankar is from ICSC environment books only. So, I have prepared from ICSC environment books and from materials available. I prepared most of the dynamic environmental questions from Wikipedia. Any other doubts? Good score in essay. Half of the marks are good scores. Half of the marks. Whatever. Even if they are keeping you 10 marks essay, if you are getting 5, you are a very good scorer. PR Rao, PR Rao blue color book. So, one small will be there and one chapter will be AP bifurcation, I think which will be hardly 17 pages or 18 pages. Read those, that is more than enough. What else? Uh, I am telling that APPSC has given about 150 not 150 words it's mentioned 200 then uh, please follow <laughs> no 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 i don't uh, you know uh, just cross the word limit that i'll particularly say but in a page you can hardly write 110 words 100 to 110 120 if you are if your writing is pretty small in a page okay so usually it will be you can say 80 to 120 depending on your writing so three pages will be hardly 100, 100, around 250 or 2 pages and 1 diagram is almost same, 200 words. Okay. So, please concentrate. If they have given like that, please. But in APPSC, about 800 words has been. It is about 800. So, you can cross till 400. So, 1000 to 1200, you can write an essay. That is what I meant to say. Yeah. So, if it is mentioned specifically 150 or 200, Specifically, because you need to see the notification first of all and then act accordingly, okay. Don't uh, uh, foolishly lose marks over there. By writing 50 extra words, if you are losing marks, that does not make any sense, right. Yeah, and one more important thing, one more important thing, do not underestimate qualifying Telugu and qualifying English papers, okay. You are doomed to get failed if you do not prepare. Because last time itself, those who are opting for qualifying Telugu, uh, like everyone needs to write, no, sorry. Uh, everyone needs to write uh, qualifying Telugu. Those who are from English medium backgrounds, the Telugu paper was damn tough. Damn tough. So, you need to prepare last 5 to 10 years of UPSC Telugu papers. UPSC Telugu qualifying papers will be available. Please download. Please write 2 or 3 papers. Okay, many have lost their writing skills. They will actually calculate your uh, uh, writing mistakes. Akshara doshalu, they will find out and they will reduce your marks. Okay, so do not do that doshalu. Okay, please be aware, please prepare fully. And those who are from Telugu medium, okay, 
English paper, qualifying English paper will show you stars. Trust me. So, please prepare UPSC qualifying English paper. Qualifying English paper. Uh, last 5 to 10 years English paper. Prepare very well and then go. Okay. And prepare uh, last APPSC papers as well. Till now, I think uh, 3 or 4 papers are available. Qualifying Telugu and qualifying English paper. Prepare those papers and last 5 years of UPSC qualifying English, qualifying Telugu papers. Write it off. Okay. Write. Write 3 papers at least. Okay. Please go through all 7 or 8 but write it off. Those who are from English medium, write Telugu and those who are from Telugu medium, write English. 3 papers definitely you should be writing. If not, you are bound to fail. Because how to filter out people? 49 people. So like this we can filter out people. You know, if you give tough qualifying Telugu examination, half of them will be disqualified. So that is one thing. So please don't fail over there. At least get 40, 45 marks out of 100. 45 percent out of 100. Yeah. Any other questions? Any other questions? And uh, coming to this uh, very great question, I always get wherever I go. You know, what to write first? Shall I write it in order? Or shall I write in uh, whatever way I, uh, I feel that the answers are comfortable or I feel that I know these questions pretty well? So, which order I need to go for? This is A, this is B. How many will go for A? How many will go for A? Whatever might be, you might not be knowing first question properly, but still you attempt first, second, third, fourth, fifth in an order. So, B is, you know fifth question pretty good. So, you write fifth one first and then second one and then ninth one and then first one. Okay. So, who will go for A? Who will go for B? Who, who are going for A? Raise your hands. Okay, who are going for B, raise your hands. Please go for B. Okay, don't never ever go for A. Okay, if you are bound to don't know the answers because see there is a transcript on front page if you observe where they need to actually give marks for every question you have answered. Let us say you have answered fifth and they have corrected fifth university professors came and corrected fifth question. So, they will find out where is 5 and you got 6 questions, 6 marks out of 10, they will give 6 marks. Okay. And now you have answered first question here itself, which you do not know anything and you got half mark. What, we, what might be the impression of other questions? Okay. So, they will give the marks. Do not think that, okay, uh, you know, because I jumbled, I lost marks. There is no such thing. Okay. But you need to write every question. While you are jumbling, you might miss the question. Please do not do that. You know, make sure you write every question. And one more tip, one more tip. Whatever the syllabus you are preparing, whatever the syllabus you are preparing, look out for direct questions, direct questions from these sources. First, AU, BA and MA question papers. Usmania, OU, BA and MA question papers. HCU, BA, MA question papers. Telugu University, BA, MA question papers. And BA or uh, any other uh, APPSC group 1 questions. Uh, which came in uh, newspapers like Inadu, Vartha. Why? That should be your question. And Igno. Igno. Sorry. Forgot Igno. And uh, Telugu Academy textbooks. So, there are some questions at the end of every chapter after in Telugu Academy textbooks. Why? Why? Professors will prepare your question papers. So, I am a professor for 10 years. Okay? So, I know 
uh, if I have prepared my paper long back, 10 years back, I know this year that uh, if at all I called for any uh, framing of question. Because I prepared that question that will be back in my mind somewhere. So it will come, uh, it will pop up in my mind, I, I might give same question in APPSC as well. Okay. Professors will question, prepare your question papers. So you should be giving a quick eye. Don't waste your time searching for those. Many you won't, you won't get many papers. But if at all you are reading, you finish your history, you know, for an hour search all the papers and uh, just go through the questions. That's it. Please do that. Don't miss it. Okay. Please do that exercise. Yeah. Any other things you want? Culture, okay. Ask your friends to discuss with you. No, if you are not that much interested, then inculcate interest no other go. You don't like sometimes kakar kai kora in home. But that's the only thing made. You are bound to eat to satisfy your mom. Right? So, and eventually you will end up eating it even though you will have a biryani at night. Right? So, that's the only way. You know, you, you ask your friends to make some notes and discuss with you. That is one thing. Or you watch some cultural videos. That is also there. So, both. Yeah. Any other? Any other doubts you have while preparation, during preparation? Yeah. Uh, no needless, uh, because uh, one, your number will be sufficient. But if you want to give any side headings to your question, let us say Gupta's art and architecture. So you can explain directly about Gupta's and what are the prominent figures of Gupta, age of Gupta's, and then art, you can give a side heading. No, no needless. Needless, needless, not required. You give a question number, that's more than enough. Uh, because they'll never look and it is waste of your time actually. Don't write a question in front and waste your time. Tell me about mistakes. Tell me about mistakes. Yeah. Yeah, one more thing. Writing everything in points is a blunder. Don't do it. Okay? Or writing everything in para, that is also a blunder. Mix and match of both. Okay? So, there should be proper introduction in para. You need to introduce the question in paragraph. If at all a point wise has been given, let us say, five dimensions of constitution. They asked the question, right? Then you mention one, two, three, four, five. You mention in one, around one para, two, around one para, third, another dimension, one more para. Likewise, give numbers or write points. But uh, don't, uh, you know, you will be trained in very specific way. It is mix and match of both. But don't write only in points or don't write only in paragraphs. Mix and match both accordingly. At, according to the question, it will, uh, it will be like that. Coming to the blunders of question, please read the question twice or thrice. You know, unable to understand in the question is a failure itself. Okay? So, you need to understand the question properly first of all. And what is the key Q word over there? What is, what are Q words? Yeah, discuss, explain, analyze, illustrate, critically analyze. So, if Whatever is the question word, you know, you please discuss advantages, disadvantages, your own view, way forward should always be positive, do not uh, criticize anyone, okay. So, let us hope I will wake, wake up to that country, let us hope I will wake up to that state, okay. Let me hope I will wake up in Mars, so that should be your way forward, okay. So, you are waking up to something. You are not sleeping. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Any other doubt? Someone? Yeah. 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 If at all the question um, demands, let us say, uh, discuss about the architecture of Gupta. Only architecture. 
So, then you specifically want to mention about 5 to 10 points regarding architecture of Gupta. Yeah, that is what I am telling. See, then uh, 10 points uh, of architecture because a question, if a question is very direct, let us say discuss about architecture, Gupta architecture, that is it. Okay, the question is pretty small and you need to score 10 marks in it. All right. So, then what you do? You give an introduction, write points there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Some points Gupta architecture have so and so key feature, so and so key feature, so and so key feature, so and so, so and so. You can draw, if you can draw a diagram, draw one diagram. And, uh, and then you mention, la, last May you write one uh, nice pair of why it is very prominent, why uh, we call it as golden age, you know, and uh, what are the still existing architecture. Um, things of Gupta period, uh, you know, uh, you, uh, likewise. So, if you are mentioning all of those in both the formats, then, uh, you know, uh, your answer seems pretty detailed. You are writing few points as well and one paragraph as well and you have drawn one diagram as well. So, you are covering all the dimensions. You are feeding every dog, right? If you fed your dogs, they will be very happy giving us marks. That's what. Well, dogs are like dimensions, so you need to feed all the dimensions. They'll be sitting there, and they'll be always hungry. You need to feed every one of them. If you don't feed them, they'll come and bite us. How many of you have seen this movie called uh, Tumbad? Tumbad. Yeah. So in that movie, there will be one uh, god, demigod. If you feed him, he'll eat. And he'll give you coins. Esther, Esther. He'll give you golden coins. If you don't feed him, he'll eat you. So that's how. So you are going through Tumbad now. And you'll face your Esther. Uh, the demigod name is Esther. So, and he'll eat you if you don't write proper dimensions of the answer. So keep that in mind. So you are you yourself are in one video game. Yeah. Public speaking experience, yeah. Always, see, uh, personalized questions are also just like uh, ethics questions, okay. So, if you are writing about personalized components, you can write temporal component, past I used to be there, present, future I want to improve likewise, okay. You can touch uh, temporal component and you can question. So, and so, you know, on past, let us say, uh, in my second class, I had the first public speaking experience. I was told to speak about Gandhiji. So, I have prepared the speech very continuously for two whole days. On the third day, on the very stage, I was frozen. I was unable to speak up. So, immediately you pose a question. Does it stop my journey? So, you pose a question. And then you go to next one. So, definitely not. Okay? So, in my third class, I gave a pretty long speech about Jawaharlal Nehru and I secured first prize, okay? And which culminated interest to me in public speaking. So, since then, I have attended various workshops, various courses on public speaking. I listened to TED Talks. I have, I have read so many books. How to read a person like a book, I have read that book or uh, something like that. You can know how to influence friends and... Uh, how to influence people and make friends. Dale Carnegie, I have read that book. And you mentioned two or three extracts of the book. Uh, so, these are very famous books. So, mention those two books or Telugu books like Vijayan Kaidu Metlu by Anamur Virendranath. Okay? Or Vijayan Karo Metlu by Anamur Virendranath as well. Okay? So, uh, so, mention those books. And that books motivated me. So, I was able to with uh, rigorous practice and continuous efforts, I was able to improve my public speaking skills. Now, I am a full-time lecturer or a teacher. You know, teaching uh, 50 to 100 students per day continuously on a stage without any fear. So, my journey has been very pretty staunch or hard, but, uh, uh, you know, I was able to overcome my uh, fear of public speaking.
you can start from there you cover your journey even if it is a mythical journey no one is going to judge you but you please write that you know you please write that as if it is a story story of a hero in a movie you no know, first he is nobody but eventually he'll become a prime minister within two days and he'll change the world and uh, you know he'll make india a greater economy than us economy you have seen that movie no upendra's uh, some movie will be there you know uh, india will be ahead of us in that movie and uh, eventually us people will come and ask india the debt you know you please write that your experience just like that like a superhero you are don't never underestimate yourself okay so um, no, I, i might be ironically or sarcastically saying that but you know include in, uh, induce some mythical things or some happenings even though if you didn't undergo on that but include some features that's what i want to say so you de- don't say that uh, you are right you have opted for a question on my public speaking experience and immediately you say i never spoke on stage i don't have a public speaking experience and you concluded so how foolish it is to pick up that question and answer like that so please don't do that you say that i am the master public speaker master debater of my school i used to debate for my school and i used to represent my state across nations in youth festival across india so you please write all of this even though whatever your aspirations please write that in a question okay yeah so any other doubts my training schedule okay you want to know about my training why <laughs> oh inspirational for you okay great so there will be one year of training for deputy collectors so first they'll attach with uh, one district so uh, and there will be a gvo uh, in which uh, you will be trained accordingly according to the gvo for one week you will be a vrgo for another week you will be an mpdo for one week you will be one or two weeks you will be revenue inspector for one or two weeks you will be uh, tahsildar and you will be trained you will be attached with all of those and then there will be one hrda training which will be around two to three months and there will be one professional training which will be around one month so currently i am undergoing training at ap hrda at kaja village guntur okay so it is currently at guntur so it used to be at bapatla now they are planning to shift it to by the time you people will come it might be at vizag so they might shift that to vizag so uh, it is an awesome experience because uh, we'll get to see a new set of friends who will be your batchmates for life long so the, i always think it is a life long college right so in college at least after 2 years we might get away with our batchmates but the batchmates will get here after the job they are for life long no so we are 27 in number and all of us are pretty well mm, very good in studies very intelligent people at the same time very jovial hearts and we are having one uh, one hell of it, one hell in the sense positive hell one hell of enjoyment time uh, at aphda we are enjoying a lot we are having you know we'll do every sort of things which you people will do because we cross at that stage we can do it willfully and we can enjoy happily that's all but in your stage we studied hell okay we studied like hell as well so my sincere request is please study hard definitely it will bear fruits yeah any other things hmm my yeah yeah definitely i'll send it to someone okay uh, so you you will be able to see what are the question i have uh, read over here for you you can see them yeah 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 for analysis you will just uh, write uh, you know your observations in a point for critically analysis for every observation you will write a positive pro or a con so negatively you need to analyze for critical analysis okay so for every uh, observation there will be one positive and one negative uh see that is a gamble you are going to play if at all you are you are being selective then you won't get selection at a choice so akkada meeku question ela adigina meeru chachinatu ade attempt cheyalsi vastundi 
another question you might miss so you can be picky over there or picky over here so my go to is picky being there at the examination if you are picky over here just imagine if uh, it topples down you are on a wrong foot and uh, your earth is toppling down you might fall you have learned the art of balancing but eventually what happens if the topple is very severe you might end up falling right so the same meer konni chapter lu maatrame chadivvelite em avutundi ante you might not uh, uh, get the choice of choosing a question and vachina question meer correct ga nyayam cheyalekapotharu provided if you don't know proper answer of it but na naaku telisi you should be able to prepare within uh 12 days 12 days preparation is quite enough for one subject read very fastly read fastly uh syllabus degir pettu chadavandi syllabus lo unna prati word ki around 5 to 10 points pettu chadavandi 5 to 10 points mi degir unda syllabus lo unna prati word ki konni chadivisin syllabus lo untai don't make notes or ipudu avem cheyadu adi just go through quickly and oka enti ante oka 5 10 points meer choosesi అవదిలేండి ఏంటి ఆల్రెడీ చదివిసిన పార్ట్స్ చదవని పాటలు ఉంటాయి దానికి ఇఫ్ యూఆర్ మేకింగ్ ఎనీ నోట్స్ ప్రిపేర్ సమ్ నోట్స్ ఇంకా ఏమన్నా లెక్సికాన్ అండ్ బాలాజీ సార్స్ టెక్స్ట్ బుక్ ఎథిక్స్ బాలాజీ సార్ సో బోత్ ఆర్ ప్రటి యునో లెక్సికాన్ అయితే యాజ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అలాగే యాజ్ పర్ యువర్ ఐ రెడ్ ఫ్రమ్ లెక్సికాన్ అండ్ బాలాజీ సార్స్ బుక్ యాజ్ వెల్ but uh, lexicon is i have already read it for multiple times for my upsc prep so andvalla naaku quite easy ga undi any other any other questions pop pop senses question adugut question adugutaru compulsory definitely there will be question you analyze it na everything everything you need to analyze data you need to include social issues economical issues economical burden and advantages of it so we are the youngest population in the world now at the same time even though we are burdened with uh, such a huge population so our, we should economically bound to grow during that anger periods because that young population issue have come up to us and come up to japan as well very long back they have grown pretty economically doing well in primary secondary tertiary sectors at same time so you should be doing the same uh, we should be doing the same during this thing yeah any other uh ncrts and telugu academy textbooks don't go for any other thing ncrts are more than enough telugu academy textbooks are more than enough gc leon for physical geography or ncrt physical geography yeah. ap economy go for uh, socio economic uh, survey okay read it cover to cover don't miss there will be definitely one trend analysis question will come adhe adhe edan raichu meer first question geography rasaru adhe edo question aa tarvata second question first question rasthunaru adhe history question elagen raichu so no adhi emi problem led meer ye order lo aina questions raichu any other questions and uh, how is the session is it fruitful uh, i have so and sorry again i have wasted your half an hour of time but i think i have value added uh, for one hour okay and good luck with your preparation hope to see you in rankers list pretty soon and uh, you know hope one day you'll call me uh, when there is a session with you and i'll be sitting there listening to you okay good luck thank you